The Golden State Warrior season is over. What about Zion Williamson's season? And the Bucks are going to have to start their series without Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's all right now on the Locked On NBA podcast. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown NBA Podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. And we're welcoming you to play in basketball. Here to talk about it, it's your usual Wednesday crew. I'm John Corrales, host of the Lockdown Celtics Podcast. You find me on Twitter at John underscore Corrales. And I'm Jake Madison, straight out of the Smoothie King Center, host of the Locked On Pelicans Ooh. Podcast here. Yeah, we'll talk about that game a little bit later. Uh, we'll get to the real or fake with Giannis Antetokounmpo in the third segment. Uh, but we're going to start here, first of all, by saying welcome. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Become an everydayer. You can subscribe on your audio feed. If you're new to the show, subscribe there. Get onto the YouTube page. Get into the comment section. Let us know what you think about what we're saying about these games, who, you know, all that stuff. So make sure you're subscribed everywhere you can get your podcasts. The Sacramento Kings, we're recording as De'Aaron Fox is walking onto the court to get some sort of interview. And I'm looking at Steph Curry walking off, not in the playoffs. All sorts of questions surrounding the Golden State Warriors, but the Sacramento Kings are moving on to take on your New Orleans Pelicans, whom they have not beaten at all in five tries this season. Oh, and five. Uh, Jake, what do you think uh, about the old Kings here holding on? and uh beating the warriors you know you've got to give them a lot of credit right like we we could easily have started this segment and been a little hot takey of like the warriors dynasty is over and don't don't worry no. listeners we'll talk about that in a second let's here. give credit to the winners winners take precedence they it, think about this right this sacramento kings team is down malik monk they're down kevin yep. herder two really key players for them this year and then you just beat the gold state warriors after that unbelievably disappointing end to your season last year when they beat you in game seven so to come back and kind of have the resiliency to do this i think says a lot about them at least in this game right you're relying on kian ellis who was recently somewhat signed for them 15 points for him right keegan murray was their leader leading score with 32 going eight of 13 from three. They lost a lot of shooting. They lost a lot of scoring. And these guys stepped up really admirably in this one to go and deliver. And you had Harrison Barnes down the stretch, hitting clutch buckets, former warrior, right? Like I love to kind of see this story and see the like little, you know, it's the play in tournament. It's not the NBA finals. It's not an NBA playoff series, but there's some redemption here for the Kings and they needed guys to step up. And in particular, you know, a guy like Murray, I think, and Ellis and Barnes to do it, not Deere and Fox, not Demonis Sabonis. It was going to be those guys that need to just elevate their game a little bit more, the role players, and they did in this game. Keegan Murray, 8 of 13 from 3. Steph Curry and Clay Thompson combined 3 of 13 from 3. How is it possible that we are sitting here on April 17th, 2024, and Keegan Murray... <laughs> It's five more three pointers than Clay Thompson and Steph Curry combined. Uh, Kings lighting the beam and and staying alive, uh, doing what they needed to do, surviving the Warriors bench, which uh, kind of kept them in in this for a little while. But too much Keegan Murray, uh, too much uh, De'Aaron Fox, uh, who was great in this game. Sabonis so comes through with 16 points, 12 rebounds, seven assists. Just overall resilience. There was a point there in the third quarter where it was like, oh, Steph Curry gets a four-point play. You start to think like, you know, the Kings, they're not, they're not really big on holding leads this year. The Warriors have always found some sort of magic, but ultimately – Clay Thompson going 0 for 10, 0 for 6, uh, a minus 12 in this game. Too much, too much to over. You need something from Clay Thompson. And it does now start to raise questions about what's his future. He's 34. 
He had a horrible season. He's a free agent and the Warriors are extraordinarily expensive. And you have to think that something big is going to change with Clay Thompson. You know, you just look at his stat line in the box score, man. It's just strange to look at, right? Like the 0 for 10 there is so weird just to look at with him. And when you looked at his his body language out there on the court, I don't know, man. Like That looked like a dude who just knew it was over, right? Like maybe yeah. that's just the disappointment of the season. They were never able to get over the hump from the Sacramento Kings. But he looked like a guy that just looked like he knew, right? Like that's like you're you're walking home and you know your girlfriend, your wife is about to like break up with you, divorce you because of like <laughs> something that happened and you just know it's coming. It's that feeling of dread where or you're walking into work and you know you're getting fired or whatever it might be. Like it, it, he had that, right? He looked like a dead man walking yeah. out there, I think. And with that kind of body language in a game that you've got to win, even when you're having a rough shooting night and a rough season, you haven't really seen that from him in the past, even when there have been off times, but you really see it here. And look, I don't know what the Warriors are going to do. That doesn't seem like a team that really wants to rebuild or do other things. But I think you just kind of like, you don't even see it. You feel this, like you feel the writing on the wall around this team right now with how much they cost. Yeah, that that's the big thing. And Clay Thompson just really, maybe the worst, I mean, not even maybe, it's the worst season of his career to, to shoot the oh, yeah, way easily. he shot this year. Um, and I don't know, it, it could, it could, there could be a bounce back at some point, but at 34 years old, I, I don't know how much he has left. He, the, the injuries just sapped a lot from him. He's nowhere near the defender he used to be. He's nowhere near the offensive player he used to be. He has moments. But the question is, like, is he is he going to leave on, you know, who's going to give him a, a contract or is he going to stick around and be like, all right, I'd, ra I'd rather just go out as a warrior, but you're going to have to play at a really reduced rate. Um, and even the reduced rate for Clay Thompson is going to be super expensive because of the tax bill that they have to pay. So a lot of questions, a lot of questions. And yeah, they, 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 they have to start making room for for the younger guys uh, but he, he, even those younger guys struggled Kaminga. in this games you know in this game at times right like they were clearly not ready for the you know the moment Podzimski was bad defensively in this game and couldn't really do a whole lot you know you had Kaminga kind of step up but like I don't know if that dude's going to be an all-star ever it's it's weird right like it, you look at this Warriors team and how much did you know missing on that James Wiseman pick like really kill them and some of the future team building right yeah, it, it, no, it, no, it absolutely killed them. It, it, that that was a that was a pick. They had that one little dip, and they had an opportunity. And and it, that's that's you know, when you have that chance, you got to hit on it. And they they missed big. Um, the Warriors are counting on you. You say Kaminga is not going to be an All Star. They're counting on him. Oh, they have to. He has to be for him, right? Like if they if they want to keep up their level of play. I don't think he's if, going to be right, but like he absolutely has to be. He has to be. And so, um, who knows, who knows what the Warriors, there's going to be a lot of time to do the post-mortem on the Golden State Warriors. They're going to do that on the Lockdown Warriors podcast for the next month or two. This is, this is going to be a lot of time to fill that Warriors fans in, in on the Lockdown Warriors podcast. They're, they're not used to filling this much time in an off season, but, uh, start, start getting your, your draft, um, your, your draft uh, shows ready over there. It's all about the Kings. Now the Kings. Do they, even have, do they even have a future draft pick? I don't even know. I haven't looked I don't at even it. Know. No, I'll they don't have, don't they don't have a know. first round pick in this upcoming draft. Oh, geez. Wow. That's tough podcasting over there. Then <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be a lot of screaming and yelling, but look, no, look, look the Warriors have a ton of questions in a ton. And, and, but Again, now is not the time to to do the Warriors post mortem because the Sacramento Kings. Let's give them the respect that they deserve. Um, they won. They're st staying alive, and they're going to go face the New Orleans Pelicans. I got a question for you after this game. It doesn't really apply to this game, but it's about the Kings in general. And then we can wrap this one up. Where do you have Sabonis on an All NBA team? Yeah, I have him third team. I have him second team. Oh yeah. Okay. So but, like, I, okay, I cool. <laughs> yeah, I think Sabonis absolutely. I mean, the dude, the dude averaged triple double. Like he's like, 
he's a monster. He was a triple double monster. Um, yeah, he's absolutely. If he's not all NBA, then what are we doing? That, that's nineteen point four points, eight point two assists, almost fourteen rebounds. That's like ridiculous numbers. It's ridiculous mm-hmm. numbers. The only thing that hurts him to just wrap it up. He's it's positionless. Yeah, and, it does. And and that that hurts him because there's a lot of guys and they're going to say, well, the Kings are a playing team, and you know the people don't have any issue giving two to the Lakers who are a playing team, but uh, they don't want to give any to the Kings. And I think the Kings certainly, I think Sabonis absolutely deserves to be All NBA. All right, well they go on to play the Pelicans because the Pelicans lost to the Lakers. The Lakers go on to play the Nuggets. The Warriors, I mean, the the Pelicans are more concerned about Zion, who left the game of his life with an injury. Whew. We'll talk about that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little bit further? Ever wonder... What kind of adventures are around the corner for you? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs. Jake wants to get in on this with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level, like the 2024 Nissan Rogue. It's the perfect SUV for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Forget about the wires that are always hanging over the place. You don't have to connect your phone anymore. Google Assistant, Google Maps, Google Play Store, all built right into a 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Pathfinder, which has room up to eight and an expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability with 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing. When adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. The 2024 Nissan Armada, uh, the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Rogue. Take them all out there and find your next your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Today's show also brought to you by Monopoly Go. Guys, I need you to listen up for a huge announcement. I've been tracking the leaderboards all day, keeping my eye on the scores, putting my heart into it. I'm super pumped to announce that I am finally on top. That's right. Obviously, I'm talking about the hit mobile game Monopoly Go. If you've you've probably heard of it because it's been downloaded by over 150 million people. It's a great mobile twist on the classic Monopoly. You can play anywhere, anytime. You explore hundreds of Monopoly boards from Vegas to Camelot to the moon, all while raking in a huge fortune. You can charge your friends rent on iconic properties just like classic Monopoly. Or go after their Monopoly money by pulling bank heists, that sounds cool, and taking wrecking balls to their landmarks, even cooler. But my favorite part is the leaderboard because I'm super competitive and I need to be at the top of any leaderboard that exists. So you can see who's the Monopoly tycoon and who's gone bankrupt. Get yourself on the charts. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store and Google Play. Thank you for making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. Go check out the Locked On NFL Mock Draft live today at 7, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Six episodes today, April 17th at 7. You can find out who the Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise. Check it out, Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7. Locked On Sports Today streaming channel on YouTube, Amazon Fire, TV channels app. The Los Angeles Lakers beat the New Orleans Pelicans 110-106, but boy, howdy, that game was going a much different direction there in the final few minutes. Uh, Zion Williamson was having the game of his life. He finished this game with 40 points on 17 of 27 shooting, but Jake, he also finished this game in the locker room because he left the last few minutes with what's currently being called lower leg soreness. Um, Jake, 
I don't know many guys in the middle of a 40 point game closing out what looked like closing out a Lakers team uh, would just leave the final few minutes with soreness. Yeah, that's the concern here, right? Zion in his first postseason game kind of like delivered on like all the hope. Like everyone wants to see this guy succeed and be a dominant player. And he did against a team that kind of gives him a lot of trouble, but he was unstoppable. LeBron James, Anthony Davis really had no answer for him. 40 points, 11 rebounds, five assists, just three turnovers too. And he looked like, it, look, I'll just straight up say this and then I'm going to leave it. The Pelicans would have won this game if he's out there in the final three minutes. But after a drive and then a timeout call, he went right to the bench put a towel over his head threw the towel on the ground then went to the locker room and did not return they're calling it left leg soreness it's 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 his left hamstring from what i've kind of heard about it with everything like this they're going to do imaging on friday so that we don't know the extent of it for him not to come back out in the final three minutes of a game that you're dominating your first postseason playing you know appearance a game that while not exactly an elimination game should feel like an elimination game and something that you should kind of approach like an elimination game for him not even to be on the bench or anything like that when no one has an answer for you that's a concern we're not doctors i don't like to jump to conclusions with injuries here but i think you can kind of read the tea leaves a little bit when it comes to that and so you know while the pelicans are five and zero against the sacramento kings if you don't have zion that's a little bit of a different game here all of a sudden uh so they'll get some imaging done and, and we'll know more with that. You know, this is different than the hamstring injury, or it's a different leg than the hamstring injury that had him miss the majority of last season. That was on his right, and it took him a long time for him to really just kind of come back from that. Hamstring can be tricky injuries. I think one of the things that you kind of get the, the feel about with this is he's experienced something like this on the other leg. So if something happened to the hamstring, he's been there before he kind of knows it. And I think that's why he walked right to the bench and was so despondent and so upset that it potentially could just be the other leg, that same kind of injury. And if that's the case, oh, that's that's a rough blow to New Orleans. There's no other way to yeah. kind of put it, and it kind of just puts a damper on this playing game on Friday for him. Yeah, that, I mean, jeez, that would suck. It would suck. You hope for the best. Um, I, but like How I it said, goes. <laughs> you know, look, that, it is how it goes, and you need some luck. Um, but I always l like to say, when it comes down to a situation like this, when it's the last couple of minutes and, and something something bizarre happens, you look somewhere else in the game where maybe this could have been avoided. And I I got to go to that second quarter, a 34 to 16 second quarter for the Lakers, where the Pelicans turned it over four times for seven points. They couldn't hit a thing. They were 0 7 from three, while the, the um, Lakers were 5 of 8 from three. Uh, they, they got to the line 10 times. They, they outscored the Pelicans by seven at the line. It was, it was kind of a disaster quarter. You lose it by 18 in a game that you lose by four. If you play that second quarter, just even, or, or if you look at the quarter breakdowns, uh, Pelicans win the first one, 34, 26, they win the third one, 26, 34, and they win the, the fourth quarter. 30 to 27. So you say, okay, the Lakers are going to score 34 points in a quarter. Maybe you can find your way to scoring 25, 26, 28, and not lose that quarter by 18. But the, the Pelicans just completely fell apart. And it, it didn't CJ in the second quarter. Yep. Oh, for four, you know, one for six overall, you got, you get nothing from guys that you were counting on. And when you get nothing from guys that you're counting on while the Lakers are getting two of four from three from Torian Prince and two of two of three from three from Gabe Vincent. And, and those guys are killing you while LeBron's doing LeBron things tough to overcome that. And, and, you know, credit to the, the, the Pelicans and Zion for doing that in the fourth quarter, but that stretch in the second is where this game was lost. Yeah, you know, so this raises, raises larger questions about New Orleans and kind of the team building and going forward because, look, it's not even the second quarter. You just got nothing from Brandon Ingram or CJ McCollum in this game. You got zero from them, right? Like they were outright bad. And I talked a lot about this on the on the Locked On Pelicans episode that's out now that I already recorded. Brandon Ingram gave you 11 points on 12 shots. CJ McCollum was even worse. Nine points on 15 shot attempts, right? Yeah. Like you got nothing from them. If they give you 
anything close to average. You don't need to worry about the final three minutes because you probably have about a 10 point lead or something like that. And in that second quarter, it kind of sums up part of the Pelican season, right? Where you have a lot of talent here, but they haven't been able to just figure it out. If you look at their starting lineup on the year and their starting lineup is Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, Zion Williamson, Herb Jones, Jonas Valanciunas, it has a net rating of essentially zero. That lineup yeah. shouldn't be just a net neutral right like that lineup yeah. your starting lineup your most used lineup always needs to be good because your bet you shouldn't rely on your bench for that sort of thing and they haven't and so to get nothing from Brandon Ingram get nothing from CJ McCollum how sustainable is this going forward where it, somehow they managed to get to 49 wins when their three most used lineups were not good this season that's a little strange to me and I don't know if I should be impressed or worried about it probably more worried so that kind of encamp encapsulates things. They were just clunky and they couldn't figure it out with that much talent. That's a problem. And that's something that the front office needs to look at this off season and make some determinations about. Um, the Lakers are off to play the Denver Nuggets now. Um, D'Angelo Russell was, was big in this game. Uh, he, he had uh, a stretch there early where he was, he helped keep the Lakers close and and made that second quarter possible by keeping them close. Uh, so the Lakers now off to Denver, which we we could be on the verge of after the first round of the playoffs, no Golden State in the playoffs at all, and the the Lakers are probably going to get worked by the Denver Nuggets. So that's good thing everybody was talking about the Lakers and the Warriors all season long. Yeah, no, look, uh, it's Denver, right? No one wanted to face him. That's why there was some like joke talk of should the Lakers tank this game, lose this game, try and avoid Denver and just win the next game. Now, yeah. they weren't going to do that. And that was silly. But it, avoiding Denver would be good. I, I will say this. I, I do think the Lakers are better than their record indicates. And their record's not bad, right? Like this was a competitive team. The West was just brutally tough this year. Th their offense has gotten better as the season has gone on. I'll give them that. You know, Anthony Davis doesn't do particularly well against Nikola Jokic, but it's not as bad as some other players throughout there. It, it honestly yeah. might come down to an X factor like D'Angelo Russell, who played really well in this game. He plays well against New Orleans in general. If you can get 21 points per game from him, something like that, right? Like, that's a bit of a game changer in my opinion. But look, it's, st it's still the Denver Nuggets. It's still the Denver Nuggets. Right? Like, this there's is... a reason we kind of focus on the Zion injury here. Like, the, you know, this was a brutal game for either team congrats enjoy your win now here's maybe four or five <laughs> games left for you right like that's what you got here yeah uh congratulations to espn on uh another couple of weeks of lakers talk that's uh you know you're you're the big winner here all right the let's look ahead because on wednesday it's the eastern conference play-in and it will not uh whoever wins will not be facing uh, wait, no, it's never mind. It's the Bucks and the Pacers, and I know exactly what I'm talking about. No Giannis to start that series. That's the big news of the day. Uh, we'll play a game of real or fake with that coming up in just a moment. In the meantime, today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, or some combination of the three like Jake Madison, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, Jake, Eastern Conference playing. Okay, whatever, whatever. That's that's going to be going on. Miami and Philly uh, looks like there's going to be no Terry Rozier. So, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Atlanta, Chicago is just, you know, the loser is mercifully their season ends and the, the winner gets to go get smacked by whoever lost that other game. The bigger story in the East is that 
the Milwaukee Bucks are are planning to start their upcoming series against the Indiana Pacers without Giannis and Tentacumpo, which means it's time to play our favorite game. Real or fake, Jake Madison, the Milwaukee Bucks are about to get upset by the Indiana Pacers. You know, it, I, I'm not sure. I think this Pacers team has played not the Bucks. Not one of Bucks. your options. I know. Do Hold I on. I'm, bu- I'm, 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 I'm building to it. You know, I'm building to it. I like there to be so, some drama here. I'm trying to pull up some stats last minute here to make my argument a little bit better. You know what? Okay. Okay. I'm going to respect the well, question. I'll, I'll, I'm going to respect the bit here. I'm going to say real. I'm going to say real. This Bucks season has been weird. They're not going to have Giannis to start the season. They have struggled with the Indiana Pacers so far this season, right? I think Indiana is like 5-1 and one against them. Is that the correct record I have here? Something like that. Uh, or sorry, like 4-1, and one, whatever it might be. That that bodes well. Milwaukee's four and five without Giannis this season. That's not a great record. I don't trust Doc Rivers in the playoffs. This just has <laughs> been a weird kind of bit of a disaster of a season for the Bucks, and this would just kind of be the icing on the cake for it. So you know what? I love Tyrese Halliburton. They've been fun to watch. That team can go out and score. Defense has been the Bucks' issue for the most part this season. They've stabilized a little bit. Maybe it reverts back to being bad defense. You know what? Let's go out on a limb here. Let's say real Pacers over the Bucks. It's uh the record is one in four. And uh that includes uh what's the uh the in season tournament there. Mm-hmm. So so they they're one in four against the Pacers. Now it's a little bit different. The Pacers um are a little bit of a different team. They've got Pascal Siakam, which is great. Uh uh Tyrese Halliburton has uh, come down to earth a little bit, which is not great. So, you know, who knows, who knows how this is going to go. Um, I'm going to say real screw. I'm going to say real, you know, let's what? go, let's man. Dive in. Let's dive in. Uh, it might've been, it might've been real without the injury. It might've been real without the, the, the Giannis and all the, the bucks are a mess. It is an absolute mess. And you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to go full basketball gods on this. I feel like after everything where they hired and fired Griffin within the season and they didn't give him a chance. And I don't know. I don't know. They, people say like, Oh yeah, well he, he'd clearly lost the team. I don't, I don't know how you go through the process of giving this guy the job and he loses the team within a, a couple of months. Something's not right there. And maybe it is Adrian Griffin's fault, but something is not right. The Bucks haven't been right all season, uh, and so I'm going to say that this is this is their punishment more for for moving on from Budenholz than anything else because that was a dumb move. Uh, so screw it. I'm going to say I'm going to say that this is real, and the Pacers are going to win this series. You know, when you when you kind of think about it and start to look at it, like, yeah, I think it's like a it, it could absolutely happen. Look, Giannis played in all five of these games, right? And the only game they won is when he had 64 points. So if that's what it takes for that team to beat the Indiana Pacers and you don't have him, right? Like we can kind of start to get to this pretty easily here. Like that's a that's a big loss for them. And now they're only better number of these games happen. I think all of these games happened before they they traded for um, Siakam. So they're even better than they were, as you mentioned earlier. They're a little bit of a different team from all of that, right? You have the shooting and other things from Buddy Heald. They're going to be missing Benedict Mather, and that hurts. But overall, this team is more talented than the one that went four and one against them. That bodes well for them here, I'd say. Yeah, I just the 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 Bucks' biggest problem is their defense, and the with the Pacers' offense being as as potent as it is, and their ability to create chaos right there there's it's just the amount of decision making that they're going to force the bucks to make is is too much for for me to think that Milwaukee has what it takes to slow them down right i i think Milwaukee might be able to score some points but without giannis first of all without giannis if he if he misses the first couple of games are they going to be able to generate enough points to keep up with 
the Indiana Pacers? And are they going to be able to get any stops at all to hold the Pacers into a into a a, a number where they can keep it? Like it it just doesn't. I don't know. I don't know that Brooke Lopez is going to be very playable in this series, and that takes away from the one defensive strength that they have. If they're going to have to rely a lot on Bobby Portis, and that's not going to that's not going to go well defensively. And so um, that's. The I, I don't think the Bucks defense can do the job, and I don't think they could have done the job with Giannis. But Giannis would have made it a lot more difficult. So I think the Pacers' offense is just too good, and the Bucks don't know what they're doing defensively. Yeah, no, I think I think that's it, right? Like that's that's the big thing. It's also not like Damian Lillard has like a spotless playoff record here, right? Overall in his career with anything, you know, you're you're missing the guy that that is the key for you. It's really as simple as that and that scares me in this. Again, we've been out on kind of the Bucks all season long. How many times have we done a show of like is this the end for the Bucks? Is this the end for the Bucks? How many how many times has everyone done that show? And there's a reason we were talking about that because it definitely seemed like it. And as they again, like who's there is the people you rely on in the playoffs that's going to be available to start these games. You're not relying on your coach, right? Lillard can win you some games, but against a team that can just get out and run and score and is better than they were in the Indiana Pacers, I don't know. Like, that's that's not a recipe for success here. And, like, this would just kind of be, like, you know, exactly what happens to the Bucks for their weird season that they've had. Well, I got to tell you one thing. As a guy that covers the Boston Celtics, this is great. This is great stuff. <laughs> uh, not that, not, not the injury, but like, um, you know, the, 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 the path, if, if it's, if Indiana upsets the bucks and you get the winner of, um, New York and whoever the seventh seed is, uh, in the conference finals, assuming that, Cleveland and Orlando are just a speed bump along the way. Everything, everything is shaping up for the Boston Celtics in the East. I don't know what's going to happen in the West, but this is this is just like the the I think the Red Sea parting for the Boston Celtics. So um sounds good. I don't know if me. they exactly needed that in the first place, but yeah, it definitely now, makes them a little bit easier for them. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. In the meantime, the play-in games are still to be determined here. Plenty of conversation about the end of the Warriors coming up and the end of, uh, you know, whoever is is in the East and tons of conversation, I'm sure, about the Lakers. Lockdown Lakers is going to have you covered there. Obviously, Pels and Kings, you guys are going to have probably do a, a fun crossover. So look for the crossovers all over the network. Oh, yeah, crossovers are going to be a lot of fun. So check that out wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you're subscribed to this podcast wherever you get your podcast. Watch a show on YouTube. Get into that comment section and let us know what you think. On Wednesdays, it's us. I'm John Corrales, host of Lockdown Celtics. Find me on Twitter at John underscore Corrales. And I'm Jake Madison, host of the Lockdown Pelicans podcast, Lockdown Zion podcast for the next like two days here on Twitter at Nola Jake. Lockdown Zion for sure. Let's hope he's okay. I just saw the Shams tweet that it's they're thinking it's a left hamstring injury. So hopefully, hopefully it's it's he's okay. Let's just hope. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're going to have uh, who's who's does tomorrow's show. It's going to be Nick Angstead and Pat the Designer. That who's That's who does the Thursday show. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're, you're watching that. And make sure you are sharing the podcast and spreading the word. Tell everybody, especially during the NBA playoffs, that they should be listening to and watching the Locked On NBA podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day.